Lil Wayne is one of the most intriguing artists ever. From his image to his bars, everything about Wayne is unique. He's created flows and styles of rap that inspired a whole generation of artists. He's had hits that still ring off in the club today, a feature run that is still unmatched, and of course, he mentored some of the biggest rappers of all time. But one of the most fascinating things about Wayne is his actual recording process. In this video, we're going to take a look at what Lil Wayne is really like in the studio, straight from the mouths of artists like Jay-Z, Drake, Eminem, and more. Lil Wayne is a studio rat. He's basically always recording. You don't give a fuck about what they do. So I can they be better? All I don't, I breathe this shit. I'm in the studio right now, B. I just done a song with Shakira and Beyonce. I just got a 106 premiere of my new video today. I switched hoodies and tennis shoes and came to the fucking studio. Not the club, the studio, nigga. And not for y'all, <laughs> for me. You feel me? Although he may be a bit more stationary today, during the height of his dominant run, his studio was constantly moving. There's this classic clip of Wayne recording his Swagger Like Us verse in a hotel room. One take Timmy. I deserve a Grammy, an Oscar, and an Emmy. Okay? Hello world. And no one on the corner has Swagger Like I. Too cool for school, fly boy high. I drop out like I fell from the sky. Hold up, let me wipe the cloud out my eye. I have class. Mm. He has class. He has class. First in the lunch line. My lunch ticket, let me eat rappers at lunchtime. Swagger, shining brighter than sunshine. Misfit, ducking the fashion one time. But for Wayne, there's still nothing like the actual studio. What happened was. I was doing my my other type of music shit, and when I got on the tour, I got a studio bus, but it's hard to recall. Like you can't, you typically, you totally can't recall while it's moving, and we always moving. So it was like basically no work, and honestly, I felt like I was slipping. It was like, oh man, oh man, I was writing because I couldn't recall. Like, oh man. Mixtape time. Watching him go into the booth and freestyle every bar is special. And I don't want to name no number, just some brain from a no. I ain't came in the hummer, that's a Bentley Mall under. I'm nasty on the beat like the runners. I'm a gunner like a hunter with a gun, with a deal right in front of him. I'm a send him to who brung him. Right after that. But this process also didn't come out of nowhere. Lil Wayne has been in the studio since he was 14 years old. Bun B did an interview recently and he explained why Wayne is so comfortable recording. So Stunner was like, how do we nurture this talent? Uh, my whole thing was just keep him in the studio. Whatever it is he want to do, let him do it in the studio. So that when he try to do it away from the studio, it feel different, it feel weird. And even back then, he was still showing promise to be one of the greats. Because Baby knew he had an extremely talented artist in Wayne. Mm -hmm. And his whole thing was, I, I got to cultivate this talent. I got to put this talent in a position to grow and be as good as, because we looking at him at 14 when he can't curse and he's easily the best rapper in the room. Yeah. Right. right. Yep. So, at, at, <laughs> and at 14, I'm serious. Yeah. At 14, he's easily the best <laughs> rapper in the room. Think about it for a second. Lil Wayne has been locked in the studio since 14 years old. He is currently 39. That means that for 25 years straight, Wayne has spent the majority of his time in the studio, and yes, I did that math off the top of my head. That in itself is a legendary accomplishment for Wayne, and T.I. even made a similar point recently when he was discussing the greatest rappers of all time. Wayne a bad I ain't gonna never take nothing away from him, and I've said this publicly, you know, when it comes to when people be making their little lists and shit, I feel like, yeah, you should put Wayne you know, you should. I would put Wayne a, a, a top me on the list. You know why? Because he's dedicated his entire life to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he, he rapped and that's it. You did like that nigga. This is he out. He, this is it for him. Rap. You know what I mean? And that probably isn't even an exaggeration. It does seem like literally all Wayne does is rap. He doesn't even listen to other rappers rap. He just makes his own music in his own zone. I mean, he even thought that 21 Savage was a group. 
I ran into a bunch of artists uh -huh. that had problems with finding with me saying before that I don't know them uh -huh. publicly and right. saying that I don't know who that person was or right. maybe um, mistaking that person for something. I remember I mistake 21 Savage for a damn group. I remember when I was oh, asking, doing, that does sound when like they asked like me, like I said they got 20, I said they got 21 fucking new rappers <laughs> in one group, and I said, and like, I, I was so serious, I was like, I was like, man, that's like a new Wu-Tang. <laughs> to be fair, there is a group called 21 Pilots, so maybe that's where he was coming from. It's great, good job. Wayne is basically synonymous with not writing down any of his rhymes, but his process of getting there is almost unbelievable to say out loud. So Wayne apparently had all of his bars written down at first in notebooks, but when he decided that he was going to freestyle everything for the rest of his career, here's what he said. The only way I won't be able to rap anything I've written again is to record everything I've written before once. So literally, Lil Wayne recorded every single bar he had written down that was unreleased. This resulted in a 35 minute freestyle called 10,000 bars. Talk about putting in your 10,000 hours in order to master your craft. Wayne did that. You can actually listen to the full thing on YouTube. I'm off the rock, squat, box, don't rock, the squat, pop a mama, fuck with the hottest. Diamonds drop the tip of chuck, bitch, I'm one of the finest. And to be honest, I got all these souls tapped up like sinus. Now who's your fucking? Ice shining, colorful like a sack of food or something. With no hope of bitches like Rick or Fruit or something. I be the truth of nothing, several niggas, young, raw, and famous. Big money till I'm dead until the day of my reign. His longtime manager, Cortez Bryant, said that that was the moment that literally changed Lil Wayne as an artist. When it comes to Wayne's writing process or his lack of writing, here's how Drake described watching Wayne's greatness. Like Wayne does this, this thing that's it's scary and it's unfair and, and, and I'm jealous of it for a million years. You know, it's, 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 he sits there and you know, they'll be playing a record and he'll just sit there like this and you know, kind of be like, Chilling, he might get up and eat some candy and you know do whatever he does and then and, and you know it'll be it'll take 40 minutes maybe if that yeah. maybe sometimes 15 and then he'll do this and go like that and hop up and and, and head right for the booth and lay like one at like one or two or three of the most amazing verses that you've ever heard with lines that it's like what what just had like did you just play did you just make a movie in your head like what just happened and speaking of jersey comment down below if you know which drake song samples the next clip but here's wayne talking about how he enters the studio it may seem like things flow effortlessly but wheezy puts a lot of strategy and thought behind each session that's what they do on the camera they're acting like these singers man i ain't i ain't going to the studio till i got a situation a subject, I need a beat, I need a producer, who, who gonna be on the hook? Man, what have you done? One of Wayne's most impressive skills is his ability to hop on another rapper's beat and completely turn it into his own. His mixtape run is uncanny. From the dedication series to No Ceilings, Wayne has destroyed some of the biggest artist beats, and some of those songs are now more synonymous with the remix than the original. Got a mixtape coming out called No Ceilings. So you just jacking beats? Hey, you know, that's how all my mixtapes be. I just, I don't, I don't like to do real songs on there because them producer dudes be one day my name. So, <laughs> so I just do shit that's already out. And it's easier that way. Niggas be like, you killed that nigga on his own song. That's not the intentions, brother. It's not what I, no, I did not kill nobody on their own song. I like the song, that's why I, I killed it. I didn't kill them. I ain't even rapping like them. Kill their song though. So, Jay Z, I'm about to kill your song. Funny enough though, Jay Z did actually say later on that when he heard Wayne do this over his Show Me What You Got instrumental. Hove apparently had to look in the mirror and ask if he still had it. Now keep in mind this was 2007, so Jay had just come out of retirement after the Black Album. He was seeing a fresh new flow from somebody who was about to reach the top of the game, but still... 
That's coming from Jay-Z. Fiji water, OG Kush. Yeah, I drank verses and eat hooks. Got the stove on my waist and we cooks. I'm in a way you can't pass like Aaron Brooks. Yeah, I go hard as hard go. Car show when I open my garage door. Spit hanging from my mouth, retard flow. And I say what I want like an award show. I'm on some shit ain't even came out the ass yet. Sit back and watch the green grow like the grass wet. Wheezy baby, aka your highness i just killed this shit moment of silence uh take the uh out take the uh out just so niggas could be like oh shit after moment of silence just a few years later, Kanye had no problem calling Lil Wayne the number one rapper in the world. And even Eminem said that when he was taking time off from releasing music, he was so jealous of how good Wayne was at rapping during that time, he even contemplated dissing him. Single and Kanye and, and, and Wayne out at that time period, I mean, they were the ones who were uh, killing it the most right. to me, you know, and it, and it hurt. I'd hop a CD in, you know what I mean? I'd be like, Fuck, man, I'm not doing this. Right. Like, this you know is I mean? so, so damn good. I hate this. So it was like I came. I felt like I came very close to like. For me, it would have been career suicide because I felt like I want to take. I, I'm, I'm gonna make a song. I should make a song like, just dissing everybody who's doing it in the game right now. It's funny to think of M just sitting in the studio thinking like, damn, this guy is so good that I have to diss him to prove that I'm the better rapper. I'm personally glad that we didn't get that diss track simply for the reason that if the, if you know Eminem had dissed Wayne, we wouldn't have gotten No Love or Drop the World, which are both classic collaborations in my opinion. But even recently, M praised Lil Wayne for his verses on Mona Lisa, calling them some of the best ever. I was gonna say too, man, I never got a chance to tell you, but yo, Mona Lisa, yeah your two verses on that shit <laughs> gotta be like it's gotta be like one of the like top five verses of all time man thank you man thank you Yo, man. I, and and the way that i love when i love when rappers are are able to tell a story exactly man who you telling and, and and don't have to don't compromise any of the punchlines like oh no we can't do a video about lil wayne in the studio without speaking about his legendary feature run from 2006 to 2011 wayne was killing basically every feature that he was placed on and while he might have made it look easy wayne revealed that early on there was actually a lot of pressure placed on those features here he is speaking about his feature on Destiny's Child Soldier. All I can know, all I know can, that I can attest to at that time was whoever, whoever's idea it was to put me on that. I know for a fact that it was a gamble for that, you know, for whoever. So whoever was in charge of that, I remember, you know, being told, you know, being told that kill us because this is a gamble for these, you know, they were, they were Destiny Child. What I mean by gamble, meaning there's certain features that I got and that I got in my um, career that it was not a guarantee you know it was like you know you try maybe you do your do a verse on this and maybe you'll be the one to end up on this joint but we all know how that worked out even on songs that had multiple features like DJ Khaled's We Taken Over, Wayne shined. I'm in the studio with Wayne. Wayne was at Hit Factory. He had like the one upstairs, his own little okay, corner. Yeah, that you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was, Wayne was, that was his own vibe. I was in the studio. He was smoking like he's smoking now. The only difference is he was rapping, smoking, rapping. And he did like 30 records in my face. No, no, wrong. He did like 30. And 30 <laughs> records that you hear on the radio right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without no, a doubt. Not, not like no, records. No, no not like just doing like shit to be doing it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. back to back. I, so I'm I, like, I, damn, how do I? Like, yeah, get into this. Yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah, it's the 30 yeah, records. I'm like, yeah, he got to be tired. Or am I playing myself? Yeah. Like, it's like, nah, let me get one. He's like, yo, okay, Cal, pull up the one you want. He said, I never remember this, bro. So I pull up. I pull up brown paper bag and we taking over. Mm -hmm. He was showing his zone. I said, Man, I got two to play for you. <laughs> now I ain't crazy. So I played him brown paper bag and we taking over. He did we taking over, I lost my mind, right? <laughs> now I'm like, this man, this man, this man different. And even 15 years later, he is still scary as a feature. Here's Polo G talking about Wayne outshining him on a feature. Oh, I definitely want to get a song in with him just to get my get back, you know? <laughs> Cause what the, the climbing of it was, was I did like an eight bar verse. Uh -huh. And, and I just made a song just to get something new out of myself. So I was really making a song 
on the not lyrical side, but you know I'ma have my one liners in because that's how I come. But then when I sent when I got it to him and he come in that bitch do a sixteen <laughs> and do my hook over, it's like he take my shit over. I was just like, <laughs> I had a chance to go redo my shit. I'm like, nah, I just chalk it to the gig. Plus, Wayne is so proficient with his recording that sometimes it even surprises people the way he comes through for a feature. Jadakiss says he gets a Wayne verse back in the mail that same night. I remember that. Shout out to Rose. He always come through for me the same way. You know, one call, you send him the record, he's sending it back with no problem. No him and problem. Weezy, shout out to little Wayne also. Rose and Wheezy is one of uh, two of my colleagues that I sent him a song before the night is over. Oh, the next sure. morning, the ladies, it's usually that same night, about two, three in the morning, they sending it back. And, I, and I'm forever indebted to them because, you know, when people's getting money, everybody has a full schedule. Everybody has families. Everybody has things on their agenda. No, no, Little Wayne and Rick do. Ross, you, they if, send if, it they, back. if they love you Rap and you send them a record, you know. that's back that night or, or that morning. Before you wake up. Here's Mac Miller talking about receiving his Wayne feature over email. My favorite Wayne is like introspective Wayne, you know, it's like talking about some shit. You know, no matter how deep he goes or just like him slowing down for a little bit and just like talking. Um, so I was like, I need to do a jam like that. So I'm making a song and I'm like, this is perfect for him. Rest in peace. You fucking with it? That shit's crazy, man. The verses were chipping out on the stream. I couldn't really hear. I heard some crazy lines though. Some people hang you out to dry like a towel rack. I'm all about I give the rest of the vowels back. I like my girl thick, not just kind of fine. Then I, ah, right there. But it's not all business. Wayne still has fun in the studio. Like I already know when you on, like when niggas be watching the DVDs and I be on the back of the bus, I already know. Yeah, yo, wait, yeah, niggas, niggas, y'all, y'all, niggas. I was like, that's niggas. I'm not talking like that no that's more. I'm not talking yo. like that no more. You came, I I'm ain't like, talking like that no more. No, listen, I'm like, you hey, what I sound like? Like you sound like a Bostonian. I do not sound like I'm from Boston. <laughs> don't even go there. Don't even, that, like, don't even go there. And this clip of Nicki Minaj talking about Wayne's work ethic perfectly describes him in the studio. Because he works so fucking hard. Like, he shows me that no matter how hot you think you are, you can't give up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you have to keep that chokehold on the game because there's always somebody itching and, and ready to take your spot. And he, he, he works like if it's his first day on the job. And I love that about him. So, you know, it, it always inspires me like, damn. If Weezy is just doing this, you know, going this hard, I gotta step my game up, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm nowhere close to where he is. Lil Wayne has influenced an entire generation of kids and artists. His impact on hip hop will live long beyond his years. But while he's here, I think it's important to give Wayne his flowers. I feel like even with all of the things mentioned in this video, he still sometimes gets overlooked. And I hope people continue to realize just how great this man is and how important he is and has been to music. But those are just my thoughts. What do you guys think? What's the most interesting part of Wayne's recording process? And if you could only be in the booth for one of his sessions, which song would you have wanted to see created live? For Hip Hop DX, I'm Jeremy Heck. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know who to cover next. Thanks again for 1 million subscribers. I hope you have a great day. And I'm going to leave you with this clip of Lil Wayne for some inspiration. Have a great day. Peace. Hard work. It's never stop trying. And hopefully you find something they like and you try to stick with it until they don't like it no more. You find something else. Has America recognized the entrepreneurial acumen of this record label? Not yet, because if we say they have, then what else have, what else we have to do? So, not yet.